Can I get a roll call, please? Mr. Mazzarini? Here. Mr. Kaczynski? Here. Mrs. Alexnet? Mr. Cora? Present. Mr. Kramer? Here. Mr. Carney? Here. Mr. Kopech? Here. Mrs. Murphy? Here. Mr. Mariana? Here. Thank you. Dr. Bernardo, do we have any recognitions tonight? We do, we do. I want to um, congratulate and uh, invite Jeffrey. Um, think, Jeffrey, you can come right up and present yourself. But if I could, to congratulate Jeffrey Madge. So a little bit about Jeffrey here. Um, he's a sophomore with us. And he's being named Pennsylvania Music Educators Association All-State Orchestra. Did I get any of this wrong? Jeffrey earned first chair oboe in the orchestra and was top oboist <coughs> out of 13 talented candidates. The All-State Orchestra was held April 21st through 20, April 18th through 21st in Lancaster. He earned his spot at the state concert through auditions through PMEA, Western Region Orchestra in Sharon. He plays oboe and concert band as well as the Pittsburgh Symphony Youth Orchestra. He's also an active performer with the CV High School Orchestra on violin. He's now eligible to participate in a national association for music education in the Eastern Division Orchestra Festival in um, April of next year, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, that's right yeah. And that'll be in Pittsburgh. This feature will um, feature top musicians from 13 Eastern states. He is just the third CD musician to advance to this level in the past 15 years. So I want to congratulate wow. you. Here, and congratulate you. Yeah. 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 Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah, I think that we want to get a photo over here. This is a That's certificate, okay. so it's our goal to embarrass you as much as possible. <laughs> That's okay. It's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other recognitions? Yeah. That's it for tonight. Yeah, that's it for tonight. At this time, I'd like to ask if there's anyone in the audience who would like to make a public comment, please step up to the mic and give us your name and address. No one this evening? All right. Yes. Thank you. Uh, for the purpose of uh, our minutes, we had an executive session earlier this month that we did not announce. Uh, prior to the meeting, and we also had one this evening. Our superintendent's report. Well, I'm not too sure with the superintendent's report. Um, we have recognitions of Jeffrey here. I'm not too sure if I have any other report to give this evening. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. On to our solicitor's report. Following the superintendent's lead, no report this <laughs> 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 Okay. I'd like to get the approval of our minutes from our last meeting, if I can get a motion to approve our minutes. So moved. Second. Mr. Corr, second by Mr. Kearney. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Okay, on to our informational agenda. Um, education Foundation. Would you like to speak to that, Johanna? Sure. Um, I lost all of my documents here for a moment. But with the Educational Foundation, basically, we just had needed to make sure that we have a document that states what exactly um, we're doing with the foundation, making sure that everything is there. Um, and I was hoping that you had. Mm -hmm. I lost my service stuff, so I can't see my notes anymore. Um, within the Educational Foundation, we do have our foundation, and this just uh, was a signature that this is all of our paperwork is legit. <coughs> Thanks. 
Okay. Um, within that, we have um, Pathfinder as well. Pathfinder is an articulation agreement that we have um, just to make sure that we continue to have those services and those agreements for our students who need that. An agreement with Parkway and also our relationship and agreements with Shazda. And then we have our finance uh, committee report. And for Sina, if you wanted to speak with anything on that aspect, or if you're going to give that, I think, later on as we go through. We'll ask Mr. Kramer to give us an update on Pathfinder. Anything new there? Um, no. Um, at this week's meeting, we had the, um, we're continuing to go through the roof evaluation process. Um, they are uh, considering putting together an RFP for um, architectural services. Um, I wanted to talk to Mr. Uh, Mr. Seltzer and a few others about that process, whether we really need to go through an RFP or not. It's a small service. It's just really going to be an evaluation um, to, you know, oversee a few roofing contractors that come in and, and oversee the scope of work. So um, we're going to keep going uh, through the through that RFP process there and see if it's really necessary. But then. Um, other than that, uh, I do need to stop out and sign a couple of new leases with the AIU. They're going to continue leasing the rooms for the hearing and the vision uh, centers that they have at the center. And then we've had, um, we've had some good uh, feedback on um, leasing the, the, the rooms and the swimming pool, and we now um, are leasing the outdoor fields uh, for some additional revenue as well to a um, it's uh, the name of the club's escaping me. It's the Pittsburgh Football Club, but football is in a soccer league. PFC, um, PFC. Yeah. yeah, and so um, so they're yeah they're <laughs> going to go ahead and uh, lease those fields from us um, this year, and then uh, hoping to renew it for next year as well. Wonderful, so, some additional revenue. Yep, take the burden off the school district. Absolutely. Safety <laughs> at present is pretty good out there, buddy. Yeah, <laughs> I can't remember. We have done this June sixth. Um, <coughs> June sixth is the graduation <laughs> ceremony as well. So. I'll keep everyone updated. Everyone on the board is always welcome to attend that if you can. Thank you for that, Mr. Kramer. Can we go to Mr. Core for a Parkway update? Yes, I have a few items here, so I apologize. Um, student of the month was a CV grad, Samantha Wright. She is a senior at Parkway. She also holds two part-time jobs. She is a very, very fine student out there. She already has been accepted to Westminster, where she's going to study biology and hopefully be a vet someday. Uh, Parkway West was chosen one of, out of the whole entire state, one of 13 schools to receive the Pennsylvania Career Technical Education Excellent Award. Uh, our Auditor General gave uh, Parkway a very, very good audit. Uh, let me see a couple donations here and some grants. Uh, Public Safety Technical Program received a generous donation from the Dormont Fire Department of about $40,000 in equipment that the students will be able to learn how to fill and change different breathing apparatuses. So uh, Dormont did that. Um, PD, PDE awarded Parkway a grant of $25,000 non-matching funds to place equipment in the automotive and the welding section. And we, our workforce development coordinator, Natasha Johnston, was awarded a learn and earn grant of $33,000. So Parkway is going to be able to hire 15 students and place them in different uh, positions and pay them. Then Parkway received confirmation from the NCAA that six of our courses uh, were offered and they are now NCAA eligible. We've been trying to do that. And 29 students were inducted into the National Technical Honor Society. That's all I have. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Zelaznik is not present this evening, so we'll, we'll hold off on the Shazda report. Um, if Mr. Kaczynski would like to give us a finance committee report. Um, there was no finance committee tonight. We met in executive session to discuss budget. Thank you. All right, we will move on to our consent agenda. Um, 7.1 through um, 7.3, let's see, we go to the next page. 7.15 is on the consent agenda this evening. We're going to carve out and have a, uh, a summary report on the uh, on the budget, correct, on 7.7? .7? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Um, so if anybody has any questions or comments regarding the consent agenda, please address them at this time. One comment and one question. Go right ahead. So, um, regarding the, uh, the bus purchases and the insurance carrier uh, purchases, I appreciate the due diligence that went into those decisions and seeing the side by side comparisons of the different alternatives. So, that's a bit of positive feedback for Christina and the team that. Did those uh, did that analysis? So just wanted to shout out that I appreciate you know the information being presented that way uh, in a very factual, clear manner. So thank you for that. Well, thank you very much, and I will make sure that I'll tell the rest of the business office team uh, that you've extended uh, your thanks to to them. <laughs> Great. And, uh, it's been a ple pleasure uh, trying to pull all this together and move forward. So thank you. Great. Great, thank you. And then um, just regarding 7.15, the insurance and risk management agency recommendations. So is, is there, as I look at the, uh, the different firms that were evaluated, is, would there be a similar side-by-side -side comparison for those? And, and is there a cost? In terms of, we're talking about the three insurance and risk man management ser services that we had interviewed. Yes, it looks like there's for Gallagher, Henderson, HHM, and, and Scomar. Correct. We interviewed Gallagher, Henderson Brothers, and HHM based upon the information that they had provided us in their proposal. We did not um, interview Ensco Long but we, we, because we did not feel that they had uh, some of the same qualifications as the other three firms. Um, we did create more of a um, qualification comparison, but this was truly based upon what we what we heard through the interview process. It was really a service level that was very different among the three parties. And I would ask also, I would defer to Johanna, who was part of the interview process with us. No, I, I agree. And then I believe in a, um, in a in a weekly report, Mrs. Murphy, we I gave a little bit more detail on that. But as we went through the three firms. It was something that uh, the service aspect and the robust nature of the firm that we ended up choosing, um, we felt that um, Henderson Brothers could represent the district in the capacity that, that it needed based upon the activities that are going on in the district with the new buildings and, and things such as that. Um, again, their, their service aspect and um, how they could, could represent and support the district in need uh, really spoke to us and uh, they were able to give some specific examples which I would be more than happy to share with you um, some documentation that they gave us through the interview process uh, that that really seemed to seal the deal for them in, in our opinion so is there a fee for the services or the yeah, how does their compensation work how it works uh, we can do it one of two ways they typically get paid by the actual insurance company. So they earn a commission uh, from the insurance carrier directly. Um, we can, obviously, we know what those commissions will be. Um, so that's one way to do it in terms of just letting them negotiate with the carriers. And we get, we know what our premium cost is. So we don't incur any incremental expense um, for them to place the insurance. Now, if there's a particular service that we want that's outside of their standard insurance and risk management service, there may be an additional fee. But that was another factor that Henderson Brothers provided <coughs> us additional services at no additional fees. The, the flip side of a commission base and, a, and the fact that we don't get charged an incremental fee for their service is a true commission or a true fee based service. Um, and we can talk to them and we did say that we'd like to maybe talk to them about the pros and cons of either. Mm -hmm. And then do we see the level of commission that they get? Yes, we can. We can request to see the level of commission. Okay. 
It, it is fairly, it, Joel, just so you know, it, it is pretty standard amongst the industry what those commissions are. And um, basically, those, those agents are act on our behalf to go shop the marketplace for the best coverage for the best price. So really, your agent is representing you that way to, to really be out there speaking on your behalf. But their commissions are pretty much industry standard no matter who, who they place the service with, whatever carrier. Just so you understand. For employment, for employment uh, the two campus safety people, are we meeting those this evening? Those two people? We are not meeting them this evening. I see we have under uh, our food service award 7.8, a motion to award the uh, food service management contract and nutrition group for a one year term renewable. Um, could you speak to that a little bit for us and let us know how those negotiations went and is there anything changing differently with our, with our service as far as nutrition goes? First of all, I want to say that the evaluation team did a great job in evaluating uh, the two proposals. Um, and we spent uh, quite a bit of time with the group, um, and we also went back to the two vendors who gave us proposals with additional questions. Um, we have, based upon responses to those questions with regards to services, how they're going to uh, potentially increase participation, which you know our participation has been lower for this year because of construction. Um, so we have some ideas with regards to participation, using more social media to improve participation, and then also continuing to work together uh, as we have over this past period of time that I've been here, working together each month to take a look at the financials but also to look at participation, what are some of the new offers, what can we do differently, um, just so that we can improve not only what we're, we're offering, improving participation, and obviously, hopefully, improving the bottom line. All of those factors are very important to us. Um, the team felt, especially when they went out to visit Bethel Park um, High School, and they have met as a food service provider, um, that was very helpful for your team when they came back to decide that um, when they were ranking, and you saw that the ranking information really pointed towards renewing with Nutrition Group. Um, and I know they're here today, so I want to thank them also for providing us very good service. Um, but again, it, we, we still have some, some challenges ahead in terms of really getting to where we feel that we're returning a profit in, in this business, because it is treated as a business. And I was not a, I was a non-voting member to on this committee, so I just want to put that out. One of the uh, conversations I had with Nutrition uh, last spring was, um, you know, with the new construction and with the changes in our buildings, um, some of our signage was really getting behind what the rest of the buildings looked like. Was there any discussion on signage <coughs> regarding regarding uh, nutrition we with this contract? Not, no, we did not specifically talk about signage, but I can add that to our list for our next monthly meeting. That'd be great. I just think in, in our cafeteria spaces, I mean, with the rest of the surrounding building being what they look like now, I think that's one of the things that we could discuss and, and talk about. Okay. Okay. Anyone else have any comments, questions? Sorry, just one final question. So the grant, uh, up to $20,000 for the women for healthy environment, who can explain a little bit about that? I can speak to that. So um, this, obviously you mentioned it was a $20,000 grant. This uh, was to in, look into the district's water and radon within the buildings, and this was a um, precautionary testing. There wasn't any um, urgency to it, but we will get a final report back and I will provide that to the board um, with the status of that. Um, Mr. Gold has been working on that and I believe that should be wrapping up and being finalized this week. I was hoping that we would have it for this evening, but not quite. Um, but I, I hear good things about that. So it was nice just to have with construction and everything going on, it was nice just to have everything tested to make sure we're 
everything's all good. Is that testing only being done in the new building, or is it all no, done? It's, it's everywhere. In all buildings. In all buildings. Mm -hmm. Plus, it's free. Yes, plus it's <laughs> plus it was paid for. Yes, that was a very generous donation. We were quite gracious yeah, Absolutely. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yes. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. And a couple uh, other items I'd like to point out on the consent agenda. The project Lead the Way Out of State Conference for Jody King, that's going to be funded by the grant from the Project Lead the Way, correct? Partly, yes. Um, but there, I mean, there are budgetary amounts that we need to budget to be part of that program. Um, it is intensive professional development and, um, and robust training. So there, there will be um, some cost that is incurred to the district for that, but it, it's relatively minimal. Okay and things that we have anticipated with that program. Great. Now I'd just like to make note that of, uh, on item 7.10, approve the bus purchases. Um, that motion is to award uh, the purchase of three 24 passenger vans from to Myers Equipment at a, a unit price of 59.7, and seven 72 passenger school buses from Myers Equipment at a unit price of $98,400. Although we are going to vote on that tonight, we are leaving ourselves open to maybe not going down that path. So we, we, were, we are going to keep ourselves open to uh, to get in their queue for, for, for manufacturing. We want to do that this evening, but we are uh, considering some alternatives to that purchase, just so everybody's aware. Well, 7.10 approves the purchase of three 24 passenger vans I think we should probably move that out, only because say, there's probably some of us that should not vote on that. Yeah, I was going to say, I have personal and business relationships with all three of those companies, and I would prefer to abstain. And I'll be doing the same, so yeah, we'll move that, we'll move that outside of the agenda, and then we'll take a vote on that. Good point, Eric. Did those insurance companies not do the employee life for long-term insurance any of when you were doing the umbrella, did you not look? I wasn't involved in the conversation. You know, for Cena, did you not ask Henderson Brothers to look at the contract language of long-term disability, all those? We did not, and here's why. Apparently, we've been working with Ensco Long all of these years. So what we thought was, let's go ahead, since One America came to us with this new offer, let's go ahead, because we're running out of time. Let's go ahead and engage them for this one year. And then next year as part of the marketing um, for all of our insurance coverages next year, Henderson Brothers can also look at the long-term, short-term disability and life insurance. It says for a three-year period. Right. We can, but we can, you can terminate at any point in time. It's okay. a three-year rate block. Oh. Yeah, we just would not have enough time for them to market as well. Okay, any other questions or comments regarding the consent agenda? All right, I'd like to get a motion to approve the consent agenda 7.1 through 7.14. Is that exclusive? Exclusive of 7.15. 7 7.15, okay. Are we including 7.7? Oh, yeah, we, I guess we could do that after. We'll vote on that individually as well. Okay. Good idea, I think. Gone. So we're going to exclude 7.7 .7 and 7.15 from the consent agenda, and we'll come back and get individual voting on that. Can I get a motion to approve that? Second. Mr. Kramer second. first, Mr. Corris second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. Okay. Would you like uh, to move to the finance report? Yeah, we can move to the finance report. So at this time, I'd like to invite Christina to give us a, a finance report. She's done a nice job with that. I believe she has a presentation for us this evening. Uh, that is in much detail. Um, we're going to go over where we are with the budget uh, for 2018-19. I, I just want to say something, though. This is not a completed budget. It is an ongoing process, so we're going to be continuing to work on this um, all the way through the end of June. But we wanted to give everyone some of the key assumptions. Um, on the revenue side, our assessments are currently about $2.3 billion. That's a $25 million increase 
from the May 2017 assessments. So that's great news. All that new construction is actually becoming recognized and within the assessment books at the county level. Um, but even with that 25 million, we keep track of all of the new um, uh, per permits for new housing starts along with occupancy permits. There's about $13 million of new construction that has not yet been placed onto the county assessment rolls. Uh, part of that is obviously if they're still not completed or secondly, um, if they're occupied and the county has been delayed in, in getting all of their assessments onto um, their system. The Act 1 index for next year is 2.4%. That results in about 0.3985 mills. It's about $919,000 of revenues. Uh, we did get approval for our budget exceptions. PDE approves a dollar amount, $154,589, and that's for PEASERS and special ed. We are assuming an earned income tax increase of 3%. With all of this new construction, we're assuming that we have more residents in our district and therefore our EIT should increase. Uh, we'll be watching that carefully, however, and we're assuming that there's no state uh, funding increase. We wish there would be, but the only state funding that will increase will be the portion for, from teasers, uh, but nothing in terms of um, the basic education funding, special education funding, or um, what we're looking at in terms of uh, uh, the ready to learn grant. This is a little hard to see in terms of the revenues, um, but as you can see from the pie chart, um, revenues are about, uh, lo local revenues are about 75% of the total, <coughs> and you know, it just continues to be for all school districts, especially in our region, that the financial burden of educating our children are with all of the taxpayers in the region. Um, you see that the increase, though, in the local revenues is a result of the higher assessment value as well as the higher millage rate. The new millage rate, if the board were to approve, would be 17, I can't see that far. 17.147. There we go, thank you. Um, I'm gonna pull out my paper. 17.0737 would be the total. Um, this gives you a pictorial view of, this is a bar chart, the blue are all of our re revenues, uh, lo local revenues, the yellow are the state revenues, and that small sliver are federal revenues. Um, I wanted to also mention the federal revenues declined slightly, are expected to, to decline slightly in 1890. <coughs> the feds had reduced our Title I funding this year, so that's going to be reflected next year as well. If we look at our millage, um, just some facts about where we are. We're at 16.6067 mills today. We're ranked the lowest millage within the 41 Allegheny County School Districts, and that exclude, excludes the city of Pittsburgh schools. And that millage comparison was done in 2017. Um, the 41 school districts in the IU, um, the highest millage rate happens to be Wilkinsburg at 32.63. The median and the average are right around the 21.9 mills. With a proposed millage increase to 17.0737, we would still continue to have the lowest millage rate of any of the school districts based upon the 2017 millage rates. Um, over the past eight years, we've only had one rate increase, and that was in 2016, and that is remarkable, especially when you start looking at some of the cost increases when it comes to PEASERS. What does that mean for the community? For every $100,000 of assessment, if you look at the proposed millage rate, that's $47 would be the increase on an annual basis. If you look at the median home value of $128,800, and we have about 8,879 homesteads, um, that would mean an increase of $60 a year. Um, so that helps you put things in perspective in terms of what does it mean to all of the taxpayers. Some of our key expenditure assumptions, PEASERS, the PEASERS mandated employer rate does increase, unfortunately, again, to 33.43%. <coughs> Medicare and Social Security remains at 7.65. Our health care um, is increasing by 1.9% and our general cost escalator is 3%, and this is important as we look into the projections. 
for the next few years. It's one of the charts. Uh, we look at our stat state mandated PISER's employer rate. You see the significant increase. Um, and we're still increasing all the way out to, to, to year 22, 23. We would be at, in the 36% range. And if you go back, um, back a number of years ago, like when I know, like in 2006, the rate was less than 5%. That's a significant increase. And we have all been burdened, all the school districts have been burdened um, with absorbing these cost increases. So for, for Chartiers not to have had numerous tax increases during this period of time is remarkable, and that, that is wonderful. Excuse me, what's your uh, development income? There's no, not, we're not taking questions at this oh, time. Okay. If you want to make a comment at the end, we can do that. But let's, sure. let's keep with the presentation. Right. Thank you. We take a look at our total cost, our, our expenditures, and then these expenditures, the blue bar, are our expenditures without PEASERS. The yellow are what we've had to spend with PEASERS. And if you look back in 2012-13, that yellow bar up top represented an expenditure of only $3.3 million. Whereas in 18-19, we're looking at $10.7 million. That's a significant increase in just the PEASERS aspect. That does not include um, any other cost increases that we incur just to, just to continue with all of our ed educational programming. This report gives you an idea of looking at the key categories, salaries, benefits, contracted services. You see that the increases, well first I want to make, revenues are, are increasing at about 4.6%, but on the bottom you see that expenses are increasing by about 9.5%. And again, that's the expenses as we look at them today. Uh, this still needs a great deal of due diligence and that's what the, whole, the entire team uh, we'll continue to be working on looking for ways in which we can reduce our costs as well as increase our revenues. Um, but sa salaries are increasing by about 4.9 percent. Those are basically contractual um, increases. Be benefits are increasing by 11.6. That includes PEASERS, that includes health care, that includes FICA. Um, but many of these categories um, are increasing because we have additional external placements of students, because we've had higher utility costs, um, because we've had a reorganization of some of the, uh, some of the chart of accounts. Um, so there are many reasons, but again, these are all being investigated uh, very carefully. <coughs> I wanted to just point out at the bottom in the three highlighted areas, the first one says if we have, what's the budget outcome if we don't use any exceptions whatsoever and no tax increase well that would be a loss a de deficit of 4.1 million dollars if we have a budget outcome without the exceptions but the act one that's a loss a de deficit of th about 3.2 million but a budget outcome the way we have it projected with the act one with the exceptions is about three million dollars and that's a, that's a sizable deficit, but we do have some ideas in terms of how we can get that to a more balanced perspective. The next page shows the various, the same type of expenses in total, but it, they're sliced differently. We're now looking at different functions. So what does it cost us to deliver regular education? What does it cost us to provide special education? So each of these are key components per the PDE guidelines. The largest cost component, obviously, is what does it cost us to provide re regular education? And that has, that's been bu budgeted at about $32.9 million, but that also reflects an increase of about 6.2%, um, again, mainly tied to um, all of our personnel costs and the contractual increases as we go through uh, special ed as well. We have many staff members and support staff um, in that area. But that also has um, a lot of external placements that are very costly. Um, all of these categories are going to be, again, under focus um, to decide how we can trim some of these expenses. Looking at the next page, we try to provide an explanation to, if we look at the budget for 17-18 and we look at our expenditure budget for 
1819, what are some of the key components? Well, we've had some staff additions and reductions. That explains about $251,000 of that increase. We also have had uh, educational programming and enabling technology requests. That's about $1.7 million. We're looking at laptops and Chromebooks for the sixth grade, um, so things of that nature. We're looking at curriculum um, materials. Uh, total salary and benefit cost increases, that's about $3.3 million. Again, salaries plus all the benefits that we discussed. To total business and operational, we have about $638,000 of incremental cost. That's utilities, that's potentially some vehicles, uh, vehicle replacements. And so the total increases are about $5.9 million comprised of some of these key component areas. We also wanted to share with everyone, where are all of our reserves? Um, this is as of uh, June 30th, 2017. Um, all of our reserves are, first of all, we have a number of specific funds, and within those funds, there are various reserves. So if you look at the general fund, there's a reserve called the budget deficit. It can be used for budget deficit for PEASERS and other benefit increases. That's about $570,000. Um, if we look over to the capital reserve, we have two large reserves there, $2.7 million for capital improvements for our buildings and about $1.9 for our vehicle replacements. Um, and then we also have a risk man management fund that has about $1.4 million that could also be used for other purposes um, based upon the board's um, actions. But this gives you a perspective of the fact that there's quite a bit of financial flexibility in some of these other funds that would have to be discussed with the board. And this is very small. Um, we looked at, let's take a look going out a few years, based upon the information we know today in the budget, based upon some of the historical information, for example, how have our assessments increased on average year to year? Um, looking at our health care increases, what do we want to assume for the future? Um, the first set of numbers up above shows that if we have no tax increase whatsoever over the next um, five years, what does that look like? Well, obviously, if we have no tax increase, our budget outcome for 1819 is a loss of $4.1 million. As we continue to go throughout the years, you see that that deficit ends up growing to about $8.5 million. What would we need to do in terms of cutting staff in order to be able to balance the budget in 1819? Well, to balance the budget, we would have to reduce 43 professional positions and 18 support positions. And using that same number of positions going throughout, um, you see that the number that we would have, for example, we would, we would be able to look at $4.1 million to balance the budget in 1819. By reducing that staff in 1920, we would have about $5 million to reduce that deficit in 1920. So um, that gives you a picture of the dramatic changes that would need to occur. Um, if we only look at the Act 1 increase of 2.4%, the numbers in terms of the staff reductions would be 33 professional positions and 14 support positions. And then the last is if we do approve a budget increase um, to the millage of 17.0737, we're looking at 32 professional positions and 13 support positions. Now that assumes that we do nothing else about reducing our costs or looking for other opportunities on revenues, and that's not what we're advocating. We're advocating coming up with ways in which we can get to a balanced budget. Our next steps, we're going to continue our due diligence on all the accounts, the revenues, the expenses, all the way through the June adoption date. We're going to develop scenarios to balance the budget, including the use of any reserves if we need to. Uh, the proposed final budget review and adoption will be on the May 22nd board meeting. And obviously, final budget adoption is the June 26th board meeting. Any Thank, questions? You. Thank, Thank you very much, John. Well done. Nice job. Does the board have any questions or comments for proceeding on the part of your presentation? Great job. Yeah.
Okay. Thank you. All right, with that, I would like to get a motion to approve her financial summary report, 7.7. Second. Mr. Kearney first, Mr. Porter second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> so moved. All right. We will slide over to 7.15 and get a motion to approve. Um, and I'd like to get a roll call on this if we could. Sure. Scott? Whoever's going to take yeah. that? Jillian, are you going to take it? Yeah. Okay. Mr. Mazzarini? I'm going to. Do you want to uh, do the motion? Yeah, so, I'm, okay. let me let me do. Sorry. Let me do, motion to approve Henderson Brothers as the Insurance and Risk Service Management Agency effective immediately. So moved. Second. Uh, we're going to okay. So we're going to take a roll call on this. Okay, and Mr. I'm, Mazzarini. I'm going to rec recuse myself from the vote. Okay. Oh, okay. Yep. Uh, Mr. Kaczynski. Yes. Yes. Mr. Cora. Yes. Mr. Kramer. I'm going to recuse myself. Uh, Mr. Kearney? Yes. Mr. Kopeck? Yes. Mrs. Murphy? Really? No, it's lost her. Julie. Julie. She dropped off. Mr. Mariano? Yes. Okay. Motion passes. I counted five in favor, uh, zero opposed, and two abstentions. Thank you. Okay. Um, that's probably Julie calling, trying to get back on. No, that's not Julie calling. <laughs> um, on to our superintendents. You got anything else there? No. To close up? No, I think we're good. Okay. Thank you very much. No, no action discussion items left on the agenda. I would like to open it up now at this time for a public comment. If anybody would like to step up and make a comment through the microphone, please give us your name and address. No comments? I would like to get a motion to adjourn. So moved. Mr. Cora? Uh, Mr. Kearney, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So moved. We are adjourned. Thank you all for being here.